Each year, the United States raises over 100 million pigs for market. The majority of commercially accessible pork comes from large-scale operations. Because swine production uses a significant amount of energy, farmers and consumers can be left to the mercy of rising energy prices. A better understanding of how energy is used in these systems presents opportunities to lower energy inputs or replace them with renewable energy sources. There are six major areas where energy is used in swine production. These include construction of housing for the animals, management of these facilities, feed cultivation, feed processing, breeding and birthing of sows, and manure management. Of these different parts, the actual cultivation of crops is the most energy intensive, accounting for almost 50% of all energy inputs. Because feed production is commonly out of the control of swine producers, this topic will be covered more in a separate video on cropping systems. After feed cultivation, building and running the barns consumes the second largest amount of energy. Farmers may not be able to control much about the feed they use, but they have a lot of control over changes to swine barn design and operation. There are many strategies for raising pigs to market weight, but the majority use four barn stages before shipping. These barns are known as gestation, farrowing, nursery, and finishing barns. Gestation barns are where pregnant sows develop their litters. Farrowing barns are where litters are born and stay with their mothers until weaning, which is at about 26 pounds. After being separated from the mothers, the baby pigs stay in a nursery barn until they double in size. Finishing barns are where the young pigs are kept until they reach market size, which is about 250 to 300 pounds. Different amounts and types of energy are used depending on how pigs are raised, but in general, young pigs need additional heating and large groups of older pigs may need heat during the cold seasons to stay comfortable. Any enclosed pig barn needs mechanical ventilation to maintain air quality. Operating these buildings uses about 25% of the total energy. The total amount of energy used per pig is similar across strategies, but there are different areas of concentration for energy inputs. Some need more energy to make feed, whereas others need more energy to operate the barns. In general, the total amount of energy required to raise a pig is the equivalent of around 7 to 12 gallons of gasoline worth of energy. These percentages represent the conventional swine production methods most common in the Midwest. Swine production systems can reduce the energy needed to raise a pig. For systems with enclosed barns, using more efficient heaters and ventilation fans could drastically lower the amount of energy used in barn operation. These pictures show upgrades to ventilation and temperature control units that have been made at the WCROC. The University of Minnesota has shown that nursery barn temperatures can be reduced at night without hurting swine performance. This can save almost 30% in fuel costs and 20% in electricity. Genetic research could lead to matching the best feed or bedding type for pigs in specific conditions. Lowering the amount of grain and straw used would lower the overall amount of energy inputs. Many areas of swine production could benefit from renewable energy sources. Electricity can be made by wind turbines and solar panels. Solar energy can also heat water. Methane digesters can make multiple forms of energy from decomposing manure, including electricity or a fuel that can be used in heating facilities. Geothermal heating and cooling systems can reduce costs by taking advantage of the consistent soil temperature. Current research at the WCROC is finding ways to reduce or replace energy inputs with renewable sources. This will help provide financial security to both farmers and consumers in the face of rising energy prices.